You're on the road. You're hurting. Your colleagues are annoying you. You're in an enclosed space. You're all jacked up and full of adrenaline. Somebody says or does the wrong thing. Inevitably, there's going to be a fight. Backstage fights are hardly a rare occurrence in professional wrestling, and some end up taking on a life of their own, growing in mythic proportions with each shoot interview retelling. Some of these backstage fights, which, remember, were probably only witnessed by, at most, a handful of people, become legendary, often thanks to the absurdity of the situations and the people involved. Sid, Brian Pillman and a squeegee, anyone? Some backstage brawls, on the other hand, manage to either get swept under the rug or, for whatever reason, just aren't as readily referenced as they become forgotten over time. Even ones involving true icons of the industry become mere footnotes, an anecdote briefly mentioned in passing. And that is a damn shame, because if there's one thing we need more of, it's tales of behind-the-scenes beefs that turned ugly. So I, Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, bring you as a piece of public service 10 accounts of backstage wrestling fights you probably didn't know about. Join us! Number 10. Eddie Guerrero vs Road Warrior Hawk Eddie Guerrero was no stranger to butting heads with his co-workers. The fiery Latino heat had well-publicized backstage scraps with Kurt Angle and Charlie Haas, as well as others across his decades in the business. One of the physical altercations most people don't know about, however, is the time he challenged Road Warrior Hawk during a tour of Japan in the mid-90s. The incident was kept quiet until Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer spoke about it when Hawk passed away in 2003, with Eddie later going into further detail in his autobiography. Basically, Guerrero liked to have a drink or two or ten when working overseas and would turn into something he and the rest of the boys called Eddie the Giant. After pounding the brewskis all night, Eddie would grow another couple of feet taller and add another couple of hundred pounds of muscle, happy to take on anyone and everyone who looked at him sideways. One night, it was the road warrior who bore the brunt of Eddie's wrath, the obvious mismatch going in favor of Hawk when he knocked his smaller foe out cold. Guerrero was furious about it when he came to the the day after, but soon realized he had been in the wrong and the two men eventually patched up their differences, with Hawk also expressing regrets that it escalated as far as it did. Number 9. Big Show vs Chavo Guerrero of course, challenging much larger men to fisticuffs is not just a trait that belonged to Eddie. Practically every member of the Guerrero clan had a hot temper, including his nephew Chavo. The former tag team and cruiserweight champion apparently lost his mind backstage at a SmackDown taping in December 2004 because he challenged not just a larger man, but the largest to a fight. Chavo had been feeling frustrated for a while as he felt that he and the rest of his smaller-sized contemporaries were being overlooked. Despite their hard work and effort, the likes of Chavo, Paul London, and Billy Kidman were rarely rewarded by management. Big Show had no such problems, as his size and main event status meant that he would be a constant feature on television, even if he had grown somewhat sluggish and undisciplined as he had at this point. Reports at the time suggested that Chavo had overheard a comment from Show talking about smaller wrestlers and responded by calling him fat and lazy. Not content with words, Chavito launched himself at Show and tried to fight him, which ended exactly as you would imagine it would, with the world's largest athlete shoving him halfway across the locker room. Twice. Chavo showed some guts by getting into it with Show, who had previously been taken to court for damage he had done to a fan during a one-sided bar fight. Thankfully, Sho and Chavo made nice afterwards. Number 8. Chad Dick vs James Dick the SmackDown locker room of the mid-2000s was notoriously tough on newcomers. Especially newcomers who were shorter than six foot tall and had the gimmick of being a greased-up Chippendale dancer. The Dicks made their big stiff arrival on the main roster in late 2005, but didn't do a great deal while in the Blue Brands tag scene. Backstage, they were subject to the requisite ribbing from the welcoming committee. JBL and company made work just a lovely place to be for the struggling duo, the comments especially getting under the skin of Chad, while James tried to take it in his stride. Chad was eventually summoned to wrestler's court during a tour of Mexico, but got so scared about what was potentially about to go down that he snuck away and accidentally locked the angry mob in the bathroom. 
They laughed it off, but when some people saw Chad crying to James about the situation, the ribbing only intensified and ended somehow with James and Chad being made to fight each other. That did not go well for Chad either, as he was roughed up and left with a split lip. Worse still, once news got back to the office, the dicks were duly given their big spunky release. I bet they both felt really shafted about that one. <laughs> Knobs. Number 7. William Regal vs Van Hammer A name that frequently comes up in conversation when discussing wrestlers who can handle themselves outside of the squared circle is William Regal. He broke into the business battling with punters at the tent shows at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, where he legitimately had to defend prize money against paying members of the public who fancied their chances against the wrestlers. Adept at strikes and submissions, Regal entered WCW in the early 90s with a hard man shooter rep. That rep, though, didn't stop Van Hammer, a limited and inexperienced performer who nonetheless had an impressive look and rock star gimmick, from getting into it with the Brit at, of all things, one of Diamond Dallas Page's Christmas parties. Heavy Metal was supposedly bad-mouthing Regal at the soiree, and when Regal heard what was being said, things quickly intensified. By that I mean Regal headbutted Hammer four or five times right by the punch bowl, giving him a bloody lip. There was a rumour that Van Hammer's wife ridiculed him after the drubbing, and while there's no way to confirm that to be true, I have to include it here because it's simply too funny not to. Regal hasn't said much about the incident, but did reply to a 2012 tweet asking him which wrestler he compares himself to, cheekily name-checking a certain Mr. V Hammer. Number 6. Diamond Dallas Page vs Firebreaker Chip The host of that fateful Christmas party, DDP, is also no stranger to throwing down with his colleagues. He famously got his head absolutely caved in by a rampaging Scott Steiner during the dying days of WCW, but that isn't the only time everyone's favourite yoga dad has found himself getting into a bit of backstage argy-bargy. Now, if you struggle to remember Van Hammer, I don't imagine you'll fare much better with Firebreaker Chip. Chip was portrayed by journeyman wrestler Curtis Thompson, who formed the Special Forces tag team with Todd Champion. Firebreaker Chip was a big buff fireman in suspenders, as WCW was seemingly going after the bachelorette party demographic. Special Forces were booked against a pre-Razor Ramon Scott the Diamond Stud Hall, and in his only second ever match, Diamond Dallas Page, on a November 27th, 1991 house show in Baltimore. During the match, Dallas felt like Chip was working too stiff with him and warned him that a receipt was on its way. Tensions flared after Page got his shots in, and the aggro continued when they got behind the curtain, with a shouting match being closely followed by a fight, which ended when DDP used his bouncing experience to subdue Chip with a front face lock. Things cooled down, and the pair eventually shook hands and had a beer together, while DDP thanked his lucky stars he didn't come out of the tussle with a black eye, since he was due to marry Kimberly just four days later. Number 5. The Hurricane vs Rodney Mack Stand back! There's a really angry Shane Helms coming through. Helms isn't the biggest of wrestlers by any stretch, but that's never stopped him from standing up and defending himself in the past. He notably got into it with, and got the better of, Buff Bagwell when the two were training shortly after being signed by WWE, and he's also had an admittedly drunken run-in with pal Chris Jericho as well. One physical confrontation that didn't work out for Sugar Shane was when he raised the ire of former WWE star Rodney Mack. The Hurricane and partner Rose were due to wrestle Mac and Mark Henry on a September 13th, 2003 house show when things got heated as the teams were laying out the match. According to reports from the time, Helms was dictating what would happen in the ring and ignoring Rodney's suggestions, which led to words being exchanged and ended with Mac sending a bloodied Helms to the hospital. While he did need treatment after the incident, the planned match did go ahead as scheduled, though the result was changed so that Mac and Henry's team went over. There were no lasting repercussions, but both men did receive a talking to about it, and the match was subsequently changed up, with both teams taking on different opponents on future shows. Number 4. Buff Bagwell vs Ernest Miller a couple of years before Shane Helms launched a water bottle off his head, Buff Bagwell was squaring up with Ernest Miller backstage in WCW. The deal went down at the 1999 Road Wild pay-per-view, but the fracas wasn't the result of one particular isolated incident. Bagwell was generally disgruntled at the fact that Miller had always been booked to look superior and get the upper hand in their exchanges during the feud. Miller, on the other hand, wasn't too pleased with Buff's mocking promo from the July 19th episode of Nitro. By the way, did I mention that the stuff did said promo in full blackface and it featured lots of racial overtones? Seems quite important, that. 
Everything came to the boil in Sturgis after Bagwell was informed that he had been penciled in to do the job and then complained to Booker Kevin Nash to get the result changed. During a pre-match meeting, Buff either slapped or attempted to slap Miller, which was a mistake since the cat was a former karate champion and rocked him with a couple of solid punches to the face. Buff backed down and incredibly the match went ahead as planned that night, with Bagwell winning thanks to some shenanigans. He was removed from the following night's Nitro as a punishment though. Number 3. Paul Roma vs Coco Beware I'm sure you, like me, have often sat around and wondered what would happen if Coco Beware and Paul Roma got into a real fight. Whenever I picture the scenario, it usually ends with Frankie the Bird ripping out one of the former Four Horsemen's eyes, but the reality of the situation is, sadly, a bit more mundane. Roma and Ware's backstage fight went down at a WWE show at some point in the late 1980s, and it all came about because the Birdman had heard that the glory in Power and Glory had said something about him, supposedly this was Roma referring referring to him as Buckwheat. Feeling he had a chip on his shoulder, Coco confronted Roma and ended up throwing punches, with Roma trying to subdue him but neglecting to take things further as he feared he would be out of a job if he did. Now, both men have told their own version of this story in various interviews over the years, and both clearly have very different recollections about what actually happened. Roma did go into a lot more detail and claimed that he did give a shot back before people got in the middle of them and broke it up. Neither man was reprimanded, while Roma's attempts to instigate a rematch during a flight were unsuccessful. Number 2. Sheamus vs Sin Cara Sin Cara, the second one portrayed by the former Hunico, is undefeated in WWE backstage fights, as far as we can tell. His battles with Chris Jericho and Simon Gotch are well known, but fewer people bring up the time that he and Sheamus came to blows. It was said that Cara had an issue with Sheamus' real-life bestie, Drew McIntyre, feeling as though the Scotsman would only shake hands with the established main event level talent, while failing to acknowledge those working lower down on the card. Now, if you've heard any wrestler speak about anything ever, you know that everyone must shake everyone's hand every single time that they see each other, or else. Naturally, the Celtic warrior sided with his buddy and made a comment to the effect of, I need to use the training table now, I'm more important than you, while the luchador was receiving some treatment prior to the May 5th, 2014 Raw. Accounts vary as to what happened next, but the common belief is that Kara called Sheamus out and, after the Irishman threw a punch, took him down and landed at least one good shot of his own before they were either stopped or it was broken up. Sheamus, who had previously lost a fight to Yoshi Tatsu, later explained that he thought that Kara was joking, though that doesn't explain why he allegedly threw the first punch. Naturally, Sheamus won the United States Championship later that night in a battle royal also involving Sin Cara. Number 1. Perry Saturn vs Bam Bam Bigelow Two lads you probably didn't want to cross in any locker room were Perry Saturn and Bam Bam Bigelow. One was a former army ranger and Boston bouncer, and the other was a bounty hunter who belonged to motorcycle gangs and had a flame tattooed on his actual head. The Beast from the East and the former Eliminator were not to be messed with, which makes it all the more incredible that someone tried to get them to mess with each other. Talk about the irresistible force meeting the immovable object, eh? According to Saturn, who relayed the story during an appearance on Talk is Jericho, WCW booker Kevin Sullivan gave the finish of a match involving the bald brutes that had Perry going over. The way the finish was laid out didn't sit well with Bama since he had just done a similar one in a match with Canyon in his previous televised match. When he told this to Sullivan, the Taskmaster then informed Perry that his opponent didn't want to do the job for him, and Saturn, not knowing the full context, confronted Bigelow and punched him in the face. A fist fight ensued before DDP intervened and calmed things down. That Diamond Dallas Page, is there anything he can't do? Well, besides beat Scott Steiner in a fight, that is. Holler if you hear me! See ya!